So the specifically the M2 UA. So uh, Sigtran is a global uh, specification for uh, signaling over IP. It has many different uh, types of signaling on there. Here I'm concentrating on a M2 UA because this is what we use with uh, the MetaSwitch Media Gateway Controller. So just a little overview on the Sigtran, then uh, the M2 UA signaling gateway specifically for this application, the configuration of this uh, signaling relay, status, and troubleshooting, how to troubleshoot these uh, types of services. So the Sigtran protocol is used to relay signaling messages, and it has all kinds of uh, uh, different uh, modules. Right? So the one we're talking about now is M2UA, but there's also M2PA that exists, and M3UA, there is IUA, and then there's, there's others which I don't talk about here that also exist. Um, let's say in this, this, this training, we won't, we won't use M3UA or M2PA, but it could also be used in different scenarios. So the TechoBridges device support all of these protocols. So uh, it is used to also uh, terminate signal. So either you can just relay the signaling to another uh, system or you want to terminate it, right? So if I go like this and you want to relay, so you will do, you will receive some messages here from the TDM network, send that or re-encapsulate it into a SCTP IP and then to UA connection and send it out on the network. So you just really just replace a TDM T1E1 link with an SCTP link and IP. Okay. So all the messages will be sent end to end like this without looking at the upper layers here of what is being transmitted. This is on the signaling gateway portion, but on the media gateway controller, well, then it needs to terminate this M2UA uh, information, right? So it will receive SCTP IP and M2UA, and then it will use MTP3 to manage these links that are coming in, and also the upper layers, which is the eyes up. This is to control the TDM media circuits. And SCCP is for uh, messaging. For example, on SS7 network, you can have your SMS, which are going on there. There's also, it could also be terminated with the M2PA, it could be terminated with M3UA. But here we, with the, the uh, MetaSwitch Media Gateway Controller, we use only these uh, elements here in the configuration. The next presentation, we'll talk about the IUA connection that we have. Okay, so M2UA can be used to relay the messaging data to a soft switch. So this is exactly what we have shown on the first day. Each M2UA link relays MTP2 links over IP. Right? So the MTP2 links are on TDM. Each of a MTP2 link, well, there's different formats of the MTP2 links you can have. In general, it's either 64 kilobit per second or 56 kilobit per second. And these uh, encapsulate all the uh, signaling information inside a specific envelope so that it can be uh, extracted from these uh, these uh, stream because uh, the 64 kilobit per second is a stream right so you can extract the data out of those stream of information and then they are rebuilt into ip so they are encapsulated into m2 ua you will see there's not a lot of information that that needs to be put for M2UA, but the exact same signaling information that you receive here is encapsulated. So if at the media gateway controller here, you remove the M2UA layer, you see, you see exactly what is coming in from the TDM network here. And so the main goal of this, of course, is to have the soft switch or the media gateway controller here terminate the TDM traffic 
but it only needs an IP link and not a TDM link. All right, so the IP, uh, TDM link is more difficult to get uh, today. So if I look at the signaling gateway function uh, of the unit itself, you have your here uh, traditional SS7 network here, which is all built over uh, TDM links like this. You can have here multiple TDM links, which can be on one T1 or multiple T1s. So you can have one MTP2 link on one T1, two MTP2 links on one T1, or one MTP2 link on one T1 and another one on another T1. All right, so it can be distributed as you want on those links here. And for T1s, you can have up to 24 uh, MTP2 links on one T1. Then on the other side, what you have is your M2UA, six trend link here. So, uh, so it's just straight to the soft switch. Okay, so internally, if you look at what happens here is that you get your links. Here you will have your MTP2 configuration. So you need to configure uh, your links there. These will be located on specific T1s. Right? So you need to know on which uh, time slot of the T1s or E1s the data will come in. Right? So you need to specify the time slot that you receive here. Then your uh, MTP2, it will be decapsulated here and then attached to a M2UA link. Right? So the M2UA link here is built over SCTP and of course uh, uh, IP and Ethernet here on this connection. And uh, the uh, information that we will receive here will be sent to the sub switch. Uh, this is more for M3UA, but it's really a terminating uh, M2UA signaling. As you can see in this section here, there is no MTP3 layer, okay, which is above these MTP2 or M2UA. The MTP3 is handled here at the soft switch, and it's the MTP3 layer that handles the point codes. Okay, so here on this signaling gateway, you don't need any SS7 point codes. Uh, you just need to relay the signaling links end to end here, and the soft switch will uh, uh, be able to assign point codes depending on the links and, and maybe attach them into uh, link sets. It could have link sets coming from this device and maybe another device with other link sets uh, all linked here into the uh, soft switch. So it does the aggregation of all those links. The trick here is that since there's uh, each of the TDM links are only 64 kilobit per second, uh, and I would say as a, as a rule of thumbs that I'm, I'm using to, to scale the systems, uh, I use about 25 calls per second per uh, TDM link. All right, so if you have a lot of calls that come in the system here, well, one link may not be enough. So you may want to have more links. The other reason to get more links is, of course, for redundancy. So you may want to have at least two links coming into each of those devices. And you may want to have more than one device here with other links going like this to the uh, soft switch. A so soft switch can handle multiple M2UA connections here. And then you can have, let's say, four uh, SS7 links. So you have redundancy per unit. You have redundancy per uh, T1, because this could be four different T1s. And then you have increased capacity. So you could run at easily uh, 50 or 75 calls per second over these three links, while uh, even uh, if one of those links is down. Now I showed that the, uh, the signaling uh, relay can be done on the signaling gateway or the media gateway. And both of them support the same number of links. Right? So you can support 
64 MTP2 links and uh, 64 M2PA links here. Uh, yeah, so M2UA, oh, sorry, sorry, M2UA links here, 64 M2UA links. So you can attach each of those MTP2 link to one M2UA link uh, straight into the connection. So if we start with the MTP2 link configuration, so that is on the TDM side here, you need to have your uh, uh, trunk or T1 or E1 already configured because you need to attach that MTP2 link on the, uh, on the trunk. Uh, you will need to know which time slot it is, uh, it is being sent on. So in most cases, we carry the MTP2 links on time slot one, but it's not necessarily the case. It could be time slot 24 or any other time slots. If you have multiple MTP2 links, it could be on one, two, three, four. We could have multiple uh, time slots in the, for, for that particular MTP2. Link. Um, so the default mode here is to be uh, normal or, or let's say 64 kilobit per second, but you can change this to high speed link. So the devices support a high speed link. When you do uh, this, you uh, take the whole T1 to carry your MTP2 links. And this becomes just like one MTP2 link and at 1.5 megabit per second instead of 64. So you can of course carry much more traffic on there. This is usually used when you have uh, STP functionality, where you have a lot of traffic uh, going there. If you, uh, if you do HSL on the E1 link, you will get a two megabit per second link. So for the configuration, you get here, you give it a name, the name, the name usually references from where it's coming from. Just to make it clear for the, for the user, you will see this in the status. If that link is up, then you know it's good. Connection mode normally is normal. Line service here, you need to specify which T1. So if the naming convention you have gave initially is, is good, it's gonna be easy to choose and not make any mistake on the line service here. You will have the list of line service available. Protocol type here, you need to specify what protocol you want to use. I didn't show the list of protocols here, but it's NC, the main ones on NC and ITU. So you choose the latest NC or the latest ITU version that you have here. Um, the, uh, the others are for Japan. So you have uh, capability to support the MTP2 in Japan. DPC length here, even if MTP2 is not, uh, doesn't need to configure a, a point code. Uh, here, we just use it so that it's uh, in, in our, in some of our tools, it's easier to uh, decode the MTP2 traffic if you don't know what is above, right? So uh, here you can choose for ITU383 or for NC8.8.8 .8 here, just for uh, helping us debug the system. Time slot rate here, then you have the choice of 50, 64 kilobit per second or 56 kilobit per second. Uh, 56 is usually when you are connecting to older switches uh, that have uh, um, raw bit signaling that were available on these devices. So then some one of the bit is gone and cannot be used for SS7. So you can use in that case 56 kilobit per second instead. And, and you must choose the correct one, otherwise the link will not come up. So if you don't use the right uh, time slot rate here, it won't work. Error correction, that's normal. Advanced parameter here, uh, these are things we never change. Uh, here, well, I thought I had removed it, but uh, there was one case, uh, I think it was in Hong Kong, where we had to uh, inverse the, AGLC bit. AGLC is what is underneath the MTP2 or encapsulate the MTP2 data. So uh, this had to be checked, but normally this should not be checked. So uh, I'll just take a note to make sure that. Uh, 
we remove get. So we don't make any mistake. Normally, we don't change any of these advanced parameters. Now, so this is the MTP2 side. You see, it's very simple. That's why we don't spend a lot of time on that because it's uh, it's pretty much straightforward. You decide which, which time set, which T1s. If you have multiple to configure, you just add more MTP2 links into your configuration. And uh, by themselves, they won't be used unless you do something with them. So in our case, we will want to attach them with M2UA. Right. So I need to show you first uh, some configuration concepts because when you get into the M2UA uh, side of things, there's uh, if you have just one link and one uh, MTP2 link, you can't make any mistake. But if you have multiple MTP2 links, multiple interface IDs, multiple local ports or multiple destination ports, you need to be careful on how you configure the system. So I will show you uh, six different configuration we can do. So the first one is the simplest one. Here you have first MTP2 link, and we want to attach it to an M2UA interface ID 54, interface ID, or, or sometimes we say link ID. So on the, this is the, the TSG device or the, the, uh, the signaling gateway device here. You have your MTP2 link, which we're already configured. So one trunk, one time slot, very simple here. On the M2UA side, we need to define a local interface. Right? So we had defined in our IP segment of the, of the training, we had defined an M2UA IP interface. And here we have, uh, this IP interface that can be reused. So it shows you the IP, local IP and local network interface that you are using for this port, for this physical port. And then you have a M2 UA port that you need to use here. So this is how you can receive data and how you can send data somewhere. All right, so this is your uh, service access point. The other thing you need to specify is where you will be sending this information. So you need to have the destination here, the peer. So it's going to be its IP and port. And the interface ID needs to be agreed upon between uh, our system here and the media gateway controller. So in the media gateway controller, you need to configure this value for the M2UA link. So I think, I think Joshua will show you that later. So this one is pretty simple. So you have your port, the destination port, interface ID. Now, if you have two MTP2 links, okay, so you'll need here on the MTP2 side to do two times what we saw on the previous slide and, uh, and just a time slot and a trunk. So the interface ID is not configured here yet. It's gonna be configured here. So you need to define your service access point. In this case, it can be the same service access point that you have. In the M2UA configuration, you will define a cluster. Right? So you have a section where you can say, this M2UA will be a cluster. This cluster will have, in this case, one destination, one IP, and one port. Both of the interface ID will be put in the same cluster here. So you will have a single SCTP association between here and here, and two M2UA links inside that same SCTP association. Okay. So this is like a CTP association is, is like a, a, a TCP connection, right? But it can have inside multiple streams. Okay. So we call it a, an association. Now, this is the mode that is usually uh, used in the Metaswitch controllers. That's what we have seen. I'm not saying there's not other setups that would be different with uh, the, these MGCs, but uh, that's what we have seen up to now. So it's, it's uh, let's say, fairly simple here to configure this mode. However, whoops, it could be slightly different meaning that here you also have two MTP2 links. You have your local port here. You have a cluster on this side, but then maybe you have 
one peer, but two available IPs. Okay, so in that peer, you can figure not only one IP, but two IP and maybe two different ports, which could point to the same media gateway controller or inside that network, it could be different uh, systems. Okay, but both of these systems need to understand that this, these two links and these two interface ID are in the same uh, logical group. The fart mode here is the same thing. You have two MTP2 links, your network, but then at the uh, remote end, you have two, also two different IP ports, but in two separate peers, right? So it's totally independent. It, it will have two different, uh, uh, different destination IPs, but it will still be in the same cluster here but you will have two SCTP associations that will be created to make this connection here. Both of them will be up and either in active standby mode or in load sharing mode. So depending on how this works on this side, it could be one of these two modes. Right? So active will, both interface ID will be sending on the same one, uh, same SCTP association all the time, unless this goes down. And then if you do load sharing, well, it could be sent on both the two. And normally here on this side, it's even if there's two IPs and two association, it comes back to the same intelligence or same uh, M2 UA stack in this configuration. Here, it's in uh, the step number five here, two MTP2 links, same network here. However, here we have two different IP, two different peers, two different IPs, and two different clusters. That means these two are completely independent, right? So this could be actually another MGC here. It could be totally another network, uh, uh, but these two are, are not attached together on this side, and they are totally separated between the two. So you will have, just like what we configured initially, this, this connection here, but then you will create another one from the same interface here going to another. So this will be two different clusters, two different destinations. Okay, so we just repeat the first step we have done twice and we'll get this configuration here. This is like if, a, if, a, if our signaling gateway is serving multiple uh, endpoints, okay? We will use this type of model. Then we can also do something like this. So again, we have two MTP2 links. But then we configure two different local ports. So these could be on different VLANs with different IP addresses, different subnets. And then these are being configured to send traffic uh, to the two destinations. Again, here, normally it should be two different elements here. Doesn't, doesn't need to be the same uh, device on this side. And we can configure uh, this. And of course, it can be a combination of the previous uh, slides that we have seen. So this here could have not only one, but two links here, it could have two links here, uh, it could have two IPs on this side. So, so we can configure all of this. So normally for a, a signaling gateway and media gateway function for a MGC, we will use something like this. So all the links will be integrated into one cluster. And here the MGC will need to understand that, well, okay, I have 54, that's my first link. I have 55, that's my second link. And then maybe there's gonna be others here, 56, 57. And then these here form one MTP3 link set with one point code. And these form another MTP3 link set with another point code, right? So it's possible that uh, there's a, a more configuration to be done here. Uh, however, the, the signaling gateway that we provide, well, of course, it can serve multiple media gateway controllers. So it could have multiple connections here, and uh, it can also support other types of uh, signaling uh, SIGTRAN variants. So the one we will be showing is, is this one here, number two. So for M2UA, well, I didn't show here, but we, we had to configure the IP interface. So that's what we did uh, yesterday. Uh, 
or the day before. And the next thing you need to do is configure the SCTP here. So you just need to click on this. And the service type, well, uh, it's, it's always raw IP here, so you don't need to worry about that. DNS is not really used for in a, in a telecom world. So I'm thinking that this could be used in another uh, environment, but we never use that. And again, the advanced parameters, we seldom change that. So, so SCTP is really easy to configure. Then we get to the M2 UA section. Need to give it a name. Normally, there's only one M2 UA environment in a system. So we can just call it a basic M2 UA like this. And then there's different modes. And I was explaining the modes before. Uh, so you can have a termination mode. So that means you will get the traffic and you will receive it and terminate it. So, so it's possible to do that with our devices. We have a special mode here of M2 UA and MTP2 relay. So this mode is uh, when you have MTP2 links end to end, but your uh, network in the center is only IP. So for example, we have used this for satellite connections where, where the TDM uh, has been disabled. So then you have MTP2, you convert to M2 UA over a satellite link and bring back MTP2. So you don't need to change any of the equipment at both ends, but your MTP2 link is carried over. Then you have the signaling gateway, which is what we are doing here. So this is the mode that we use to relay the MTP2 links to M2UA. And even if it says here signaling gateway, it can still be used on the media gateways. Uh, we have not shown this very much in, the, in, the, in other uh, slides, but you always have timers attached to any of the protocols that are being used in the system. And these can be adapted. Uh, however, like I said, rare that we adapt any of those advanced parameters, uh, except if we do like satellite links, sometimes we want to increase a bit the delays to make sure that the links don't go down for no, uh, no real reason. So now we have the M2UA uh, envelope that is ready to be configured. Inside this uh, M2UA, we want to have uh, our service access point. So this will be our local interface to send and receive M2UA traffic. So usually we, we, we are okay with only one service access point, but uh, the, there's uh, no real limit. Uh, you can have multiple service access point local to the system, and it will be defined by the local IP interface uh, also the VLAN and uh, the uh, physical port, right? Physical port. So the physical port, VLAN, IP interface, and uh, local port is the uh, M2 UA port. And the default M2 UA port is 2904. So if you don't know uh, what port to use, uh, it's, it's okay to use the default port for M2 UA. And this will be the, the source port well, where you will initiate the connection. Again, you see here, there's some timers that normally we don't have to change. SCTP, advanced parameters uh, that are not, not needed to change as well. So, um, so your service access point here, you need to decide which interface. So you need to have one interface which has SIGTRAN inside. So if you have named your IP interfaces uh, correctly, it's easy to choose the correct one. In the service access point, this is where we will configure each of the clusters that are available in the system. So here we show only one cluster because this is enough for a MGC connection, but you could have more than one uh, cluster into the system. Okay, so actually here I showed, I showed that we configured to M2UA uh, interface. So the cluster will regroup your M2UA links and peers in one, uh, like one group. So multiple MTP2 links are associated to the M2UA interface ID. Okay. So uh, first is the M2UA link here. So you can just click on M2UA link you get here. In that M2UA link, you can give it a name. So the name here is, 
is well here we put 54 so that means it's the link 54 viewed from the mgc so when you want to debug you look in the mgc you see link 54 you look in the uh, single link gateway and you can match them so that's a uh, one way to uh, name the links mtp2 link here so you choose you choose which one so this was configured in the previous slides so you it's a trunk and time slot a reference to this you need to specify the protocol type for the m2 ua so it's either itu or nc for um, for uh, north america it will be nc here interface id type now i still don't remember if we use the uh, string or integer for uh, the mgc configuration but you have two choices here that you can use string and meta thank switch. you so we should change this slide just to uh, make sure right. so so here the let's say the default mode for mgc is that the interface id type should be string and not integer okay uh, and then you have the interface value 54 here okay so this needs to be configured in the media gateway controller Uh, oops, I'm just going back one slide here. So we configured here the M2 UA link. Now what we want to configure is the M2 UA peer. So you can do just do create new M2 UA peer. And in that M2 UA peer, here you can give it a name. So this is not, not so important here. Uh, but the destination port is important. Okay, so this is where you will send the data. Uh, so the IP will be configured here and the port is here. Uh, like I said, normally with MetaSwitch, we have only one IP destination, but it's possible to have more than one IP destination. If one becomes unavailable, it can go on the other uh, IP address here. The other thing we can configure here is the number of SCTP streams. In, in a SCTP association, like I said, you can have multiple connections. And there will be a negotiation between us and the media gateway controller uh, to the a certain number of association we can use. This is to <clears throat> have different uh, quality of service on each of the streams. And I don't remember what is the default value for, uh, for the meta switch, but uh, we will, even if we put a different value here than what is on the meta switch MGC, it will negotiate to the right value. So let's say we put 50, they put 10, the final number of streams will be 10. Okay. So uh, this is uh, uh, auto-configured, let's say, when, when there's uh, the initial SCTP association is created. So here we showed, okay, just, let me just go back one slide. Here we showed one M2 UA peer. We configured just one peer with two IP address. It's possible also to create two different peers like this with each one IP address. Okay. So, and, and how it's done on the other side, well, depending on where you connect, it could be different here. Uh, let's say for, for, uh, for the meta switch media gateway controller, we need to put only one destination IP address. So it's not, there's no uh, confusion there, but you need to understand that it's, uh, if, if, the, if the other side gives you two IP address, you need to understand is it one peer with two IP address or two peers with each one IP address. Okay? This will effectively create two different SCTP association to the destination. So it's a bit tricky, so we have to be careful here uh, when we configure that. And then both of them are supported, so we just need to know which one is the correct one. Uh, one way to, to debug this, I remember I've been uh, debugging this before, is that uh, you will see from the remote side, in this case, two uh, initialization sequence on two different uh, SCTP uh, connections, right? So you can, uh, figure it out that way instead of just one SCTP association. So here I just want to show you some of the messages. So, so the, the, the M2UA configuration is done. So it's, it's, it's uh, pretty straightforward. So you have your link, 
your link, M2P2 link that is created, and you just attach it to an M2 UI link to send somewhere. So that, that's all you need to do. So now you have your link set up, you activated your configuration, and uh, you want to see if your link will come up. Here, I want to show you just the basic steps of a, a SCTP association uh, coming up. So you have here SCTP association on the top. So you will be, uh, there will be an init that will be sent. The initialization will always be done from the uh, application portion or, or the ASP in the Sigtran world, it's called, called ASP. So it will be in our case, the NGC that will be sending the inits to connect to the, uh, the other network. Okay. In the init function, you will have uh, two, there's a, a little bit of information, but just two important information. One is the window size that will be used to uh, queue the packets that you receive. And the other one is the number of streams. Normally these are auto-negotiated with, the, uh, with the, the other side or the signaling gateway in this case. And it will match normally the window sizes and the number of streams. So you don't necessarily need to, to worry about that. But if they don't match, sometimes it can cause uh, uh, problems. Okay. Then it sends a, a, a cookie, echo cookie act. There's some information that is being relayed here. And once that is done, your SCTP association is up and ready to go. Then it starts bringing up the M2 UA link. So it will try, try to say, well, I'm ready to be uh, started. And if the signaling gateway says, okay, then we continue. There's no other information being sent here. So it's a global M2 UA connection information for that SCTP association. Okay, so per SCTP association, you will have different M2 UA links coming up. Then you have other information that are being sent. Here on the uh, signaling gateway, it will say, well, I have this interface ID available. So that's our M2 UA interface ID, of course, because we are in M2 UA mode. And it says right now it's inactive. So you will get a notify being sent on the application here. On the application side, it will try to bring up the ASP. So it say, I'm ready to be uh, started. Okay, and uh, it will say also what type of traffic mode will be used. And even if there's only one M2 UA link, it's still important to configure the traffic mode correctly. And I think it's, it's done because if you add links later, you don't want to change the traffic mode and reinitialize the link, right? So uh, you, you can do this. So there's two modes that are, can be used. One is load share or load sharing. The other one is override. So when you look at the, the trace in the Wireshark, it says override. Uh, in, in the configuration, it's actually active standby. Okay, so override equals active standby. Okay. So if you configure active standby, we will send here uh, override on the link. Okay? And these need to match. So if they don't match, the link will not come up. But that's the only, about the only information that is being exchanged here, which is important. Then here on this side, since uh, the ASP said it's ready, it will try to bring up this uh, interface ID. Okay? So it will say, well, I'm ready to uh, bring up this interface ID or M2UA interface ID. The uh, ASP will send in a, a state request uh, here, first interface ID. Okay, so the first one it brings up in a SCTP uh, association will have an emergency alignment. So that means we need to bring this link up fast because it's the first one and it's the only one we have. Okay, so we call it an emergency uh, alignment. And then as soon as the uh, first link is up, it will return a state confirm here that the first inter interface ID is ready to be used. Okay. Um, here, what I didn't show is that when we get this uh, uh, state request of the first interface ID, well, on the MTP2 side, the link will start coming up. 
right? So all be uh, before all of these. Uh, oops. We follow all of this, the MTP2 link is still down. As soon as we get the state request here to establish the first link, the MTP2 link will try to come up. If it comes up, then it will send a state confirm here. If the other side on the MTP2 side is not coming up, then uh, it, won't, it won't accept this here. And then it will try again uh, to bring it up later. So it's the M2 UA that comes up first and then the MTP2 link that comes up. So if you have only one M2UA link in that, uh, in that connection, then it will, it will be done. It will be ready to be used. And then the messages will flow from MTP2 to M2UA. But uh, if you have other links, it will start doing the second link. And then, but this second link will not be an emergency alignment. It will be a normal alignment, making sure that the communication is good there's no errors before making it available to the system all right so i don't know if we have a trace uh, joshua but we may want to uh, just check that out uh, quickly later okay um mtp2 status well it's pretty simple right you click on mtp2 get to the status and you will see if it's up Normally, if it's up, we're good, no problems, and, and every, every, everything is fine. You don't even need to look anywhere else in this uh, configuration. However, if it is not up, then we may want to get more details. So, sorry, you can click on uh, one of those links here, and you will get to the more details section here. You can um, uh, get information about how long it has been in service, uh, how many uh, frames here, you can see frame errors. So that would be MTP2 errors of uh, in reception. Normally, if we see errors here, it means that there's some glitches on the, on the T1 line, right? because uh, normally we don't get any errors uh, with HGLC packets. Uh, you can see also the bandwidth used on the uh, on the MTP2 links. So the current bandwidth that is being used, and if you increase the, the status level here, you can also see the peak it has ever reached. All right, so if you see that you have uh, multiple links and all of them uh, have been full at some point, it means maybe you're getting to the limit and you need to add more MTP2 links into your configuration. This is the current bandwidth. So you can monitor this over time to see uh, what is the traffic that is being passed over that. Uh, in addition to this, you in the status, you have the data link state, uh, which you can use to test the MTP2 link. So uh, normally, in, in, well, in normal operation, you will, you will leave it enabled, of course. But if you want to test the link going down, let's say you have redundancy to the MTP2 links, you want to see if your two links will go to the MGC, even if one of them is down, it's a good idea to do this test. So you disable one of the link, and when you do apply states, it brings down the link immediately. It will bring down the MTP2 link and the M2UA link at the same time. And then you can see if your second link is working normally, then you re-enable this link, and then you can shut down the second link to see if everything is working fine. Here, if you, uh, well, the M2UA status, so that was the MTP2 status we looked at here. If you click on the M2UA status, uh, you can see the links, each of the links and each of the peers. Here, there's only one peer. So that peer will have those two links inside that cluster, okay? But here, on a quick check, you can see they're all up. Uh, if you want to go and have more information, you can then click on that particular, uh, well, this is actually the peer, so you can connect to that peer, and you have the status, so more details here, how many times the, uh, the destination went up and down or activated. Uh, yeah, so there's going to be heartbeats on connections. Uh, this one is down, so there's no heartbeat, but you will see heartbeats all the time on the SCTP association. Um, 
additionally, on the peer, you can change the state here of the, the peer. So normally it's uh, none. This is the default mode is none. And then you can force a shutdown. Again, this is for testing. So you can force a shutdown. It will completely shut down this M2UA link. If you do apply states here. And the M2UA will go down. The MTP2 will go down. And uh, the connection will be stopped. Once you have done your test and you confirm it's working, you can put it back done. You have other states here, but I don't uh, really uh, use them. Uh, so, oh, so the normal mode is, it's not none, sorry, it's ASP active. So it should be ASP active by default here. So normally I don't change these other uh, links here. You can get the same information from the status here. So if you click on status and browse, all right, if you click on browse here, you can see the service access points, the clusters, uh, the links, the peers. So you can have all this information here. So this is the same information that is displayed on the web portal. You can get the same information from the command line by doing tb status slash SAP, so you will see if they are configured, the interface identifiers that are used, number of, of packets received. Okay, then uh, for troubleshooting, we, we saw already some of these things. So you can see the, look at the status to troubleshoot the case. Uh, you have to understand that the signaling gateway is passive. So it needs to be, it, it's the media gateway controller that initiates the uh, connection for uh, establishing the link. So it, the, the MTP2 link won't be brought up <coughs> before the, <coughs> sorry, before the M2UA link is uh, ready. To um, see the trace, so you can see the trace both on the TDM side and on the IP side. So the TDM side will be the MTP2 link. So you can put dash SS7 in the in the TB sig trace command. So again, you connect to the to the board, do TB sig trace. Dash IP will give you the M2 UA and dash SS7 will give you the MTP2 links. You will have two capture files, one for MTP2 and one for M2 UA. Okay. So you we can look at the sample trace later. Um, <clears throat> and actually, there's not much else we can uh, use to debug this because uh, if you in the status it, it's down and you look at the traces and you don't see any errors let's say the interface id the ips the port you don't cannot find the difference then uh, the last thing you can do is get a tb report this tb report will give you all the logs of the system in those logs you have uh, some errors that can appear. For example, if, uh, if uh, you receive traffic on the wrong port or something like that, it may be presented here, there and you'd be able to debug that. Most likely, if you do a TB report, you would already have requested help from our team to uh, try to figure out why it's not working. Okay. I would say it's, it's, it's pretty simple to configure and, and troubleshoot these M2UA. Thank you.